Alright, hi everyone, my name is Marty. Today I'll be showing you guys how to use the Alaris pump. Um, so just before we get started in turning this on, I want to show you a few things. So this is our main computer and this is our channels. Um, as you can see over here, there are little bars and this is where you can attach more channels. So I've seen people do like two on each side. So if you want to release this channel, you just have to press this blue button down here and then lift up and out. And there is the bar and this is the connector. To put it back on, you just have to place it on top and then push down and it should click. Now that we have our channel connected, we can go ahead and turn on our program pump. So over here is a system on button and you only have to click it. When the pump is on, you will see that it will give you a prompt that says new patient. If you click yes, then it will clear the previous patient data. So if this is a patient that you've already been working with and you're continuously putting your um, scheduled IV fluids, you can press no. But if it is a new patient, please select yes. If it's an adult, please select yes. Okay, so now we are at our main page and it will say select channel. And this is how we're going to be programming our stuff. So to program, we press on channel select. And now we have three messages. So we have guardrail drugs, guardrails IV fluids, and no guardrails. Example that your doctor has ordered you to administer Tylenol, potassium, or even a secondary fluid such as an antibiotic. We would go into the guardrail drugs and this is where you would find all your medications. Going back, you could press exit below and again, channel select. Um, Again, your first one, guardrail drugs, is for administering medications and secondary fluids such as antibiotics. Your second one is for your IV fluid, such as a fluid bolus. And last but not least, you have your no guardrails. We never use this one, or we try not to use this one, because as you can see, when I press no guardrails, there is no safety features. It would only go straight to your rate and volume to be infused, and it does not know what exactly you are administering. Okay, so to use the Alaris pump, you're going to need these two things. First, we have the Alaris pump infusion set, and we have your secondary set, and these are both tubings you'll be using today. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to prime a bag. Um, I always do hand sanitizer, hand hygiene, and put on gloves before I do anything. So. Before I get started on anything, I want to show you guys how to remove these tabs, which you're going to be spiking in later. So this one, it has, it looks like little wings. These are twist offs. You would twist the top one. For these ones, you see a blue cap. For these ones, you just pull off. So again, blue pull off, wings twist off. I want to make sure that you understand a little bit about the tubing. So here we have our spike and our chamber. Make sure that the spike stays clean and aseptic. We wanna make sure that nothing touches this before we spike. Um, then this is our chamber. We have our tubing. Um, and then this is what is going to go into the pump. There's a little cover and I'm going to take it off later. And then we go down and there's actually a clamp. A good key note is to always clamp your tubing shut prior to spiking the bag or else fluid will get everywhere. So always clamp it shut. This is your clamp. This is open, so the thicker side is open. And then you're just gonna slide it on to the right. And now it is closed. Another end, and this is what goes to the patient. This is another portion that needs to stay aseptic. So make sure that this is clean and you do not touch it. All right, so let's get to spiking. So I have a trash can below me, so I'll be discarding things as we go. So first, again, we have the wing, so we're gonna twist off. And it comes off, and that goes in the trash. And make sure this also stays clean, because remember, we're spiking this bag. The next thing I'm gonna do is take off the cap, making sure not to touch the tip. And now the best way to put this in is to spike it and then twist. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and spike it and twist. All right, the next thing we're gonna do now that we have it spiked is we're gonna give this chamber two squeezes to make sure the fluid goes through. So as you can see, we are getting some fluid, which is great. The next thing we're gonna do is unclamp this to let all the fluid go through the tubing. Now it's important that we make sure that at these sections that we keep them raised as we are letting the fluid flow because bubbles can actually form at these points. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And when you're unclamping, we don't wanna unclamp it all the way, we wanna slowly unclamp it. So once we get to near the top part, I'm actually going to be near a trash can to let the excess fluid go through. All right. All right, the final step before we connect to the patient is to double check our line. We wanna make sure that everything is clear and we do not have our any bubbles or anything like that. We also want to make sure that our fluid is clear and not cloudy. Alrighty, now that we have our line primed, we're gonna go ahead and go back to the pump. The first thing I like to do is to make sure that we connect our line to our pump. So to open this up, there's a little leverage tab and you're gonna pull it up and the door should open for you. So when we get this line, we always have this blue sheath on it. We could just take that off. It's just a protective covering and this would go in the trash. Alrighty. So the next thing I'm gonna do is there's two parts. There's a key portion and then there's this little tab on top. This tab on, goes on top and this key goes on bottom. Okay, so this goes on top. You can't go in through the side, so go in on top. And then you're gonna stretch. This is stretchy, so you're gonna stretch and put this in the key port at the bottom and it should click. And then, last but not least, we wanna make sure that this line below is clamped in right here. So it should be one straight fluid motion here. To close it, we're just gonna go ahead and reverse what we did earlier, so close the door and then Hold this leverage down and you should hear a click like that. All right, now that we are connected to the patient, our line is connected to the pump, we can go ahead and start programming. So again, we're gonna turn the system on. Uh, there's the power button right here. We do not have to hold it down. We just click on it and it should turn on. Uh, so let's say our doctor has ordered for a 125 milliliter per hour uh, for a liter bag. We're going to go ahead, and this is a new patient, so I'm going to go ahead and press yes. And they are an adult, so I'm also going to press yes. And the next thing I'm going to do, press channel select, because this is the pump we want going with the uh, sodium chloride. So we're going to go ahead and press on guardrail IV fluids. And this is just an IVF maintenance, so we're going to go and click that. This is where we would double check my order, and I would be like, yes, I am doing an IV maintenance, so I'm going to press yes. So now we are at the rate and the volume to be infused. So like our doctor's order said, and I'm going to double check, it says 125 milliliters an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and press on rate and I'm gonna put one, two, five. So 125 milliliters an hour. The next thing we're gonna do is the volume to be infused. Now this is important because we have a liter bag or a thousand milliliter bag. However, I don't want I don't want my program pump to tell me to come back once it reaches a thousand milliliters. So what I'm gonna actually do is program it for 950 milliliters. Why? That way my bag is not sucked dry. And also we have a little warning so I can come back and make sure that everything's going well. So once we have all of that set, we actually are going to double check our orders one more time to make sure it's 125 milliliters an hour. It is a, a sodium chloride bag. 
and that the volume to be infused is 1,000 milliliters, and in this case for me, it's going to be 950 now. Once we are all set and we are good, we are going to unclamp our patient, and then we're going to press start. So I've gone ahead and paused our, our pump for now, but I wanted to mention something super important, which is when you're coming onto the floor, for example, and you're getting a new patient and you wanna check what fluids they're on, what the rate is, this is where you can go ahead and uh, see those information. So right here we have the rate at milliliters an hour, so 125, and below it should say what we are putting in, so IV fluid maintenance. And as you can tell, it's paused, so it'll also tell you pause. This screen below will often tell you anything when it comes to the line. So if there's an occlusion or anything like that, it'll mention it here in alarm as well. You how to prepare and administer a secondary fluid antibiotic, such as recephin or sufoxidin. Two things, you're going to need your secondary set tubing and you're gonna need your antibiotic or medication. First things first is we're going to go ahead and spike our bag. Um, as always, make sure that these two are clean. You do not touch it because we wanna use aseptic technique when dealing with these two parts. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna take this off. Again, um, this is a blue tab, so you want to pull this. If it were a wing, you would twist it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and make sure that I'm not touching that tip. I'm gonna throw this away in the trash. And I'm going to also take this off. And remember not to touch the tip and toss it in the trash. Alrighty. So now I'm always gonna make sure that this clamp is closed before I spike any bag because we don't want fluid running out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and spike. So we insert and we twist. All right, squeeze two times, and we have good fluid flow. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to connect this side to our main primary tubing. So we don't just go ahead and connect it because obviously this has been out or out, people have touched it, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean it first. So I have an alcohol swab with me. I'm going to go ahead and Clean the port. I'm going to toss this out. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove this cap. It should be a twist on. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach it. And now we are connected. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is back prime. Um, we do not prime this way. We wanna make sure that this is what is priming our line. So to do that, we use gravity as our friend. We're gonna go ahead and lower this bag, lower than our primary bag, and then we're going to unclamp it and then we should see the chamber fill up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So as you can see, we have our fluid going up now, and I'm gonna go ahead and clamp that shut now. Alrighty, now that we have our line primed, I'm just gonna do a double check to make sure that I have no bubbles in my line, in which I don't. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually, we're not gonna start programming. What we wanna do is actually set up so this bag is lower than our antibiotic. And the reason why we wanna do that is we're using gravity as our best friend again, and we wanna make sure that we're pulling this liquid out first before this one. So to do that, I have a clamp here, or not a clamp, but a little hanging bag here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off our normal saline bag and we're gonna hang it on here. And then we put this one back on the thing. And as you can see, 
our antibiotic is higher than our normal saline. Now that we have everything set to go, we're ready to go ahead and program. So to turn on the Alaris program pump, we're going to press the system on button. We just press it down, we don't have to hold it down. So because this is a new patient, we're going to go ahead and click on yes, which will clear all the previous patient data. And because this is an adult, we're also going to press yes. This is our channel that we'll be working with, so we're going to click on channel select. And the first thing we want to do is press on our guardrail IV fluids. And we have an IV maintenance fluid, which is yes. And now we have our rate, which will be a 125 milliliters an hour for a volume to be infused of 999. Again, we always want to check our orders and we want to check our bags to make sure that this is what we want to program. So we will not be pressing start. We're actually going to be pressing on secondary because we have a secondary fluid. So I'm going to go ahead and press secondary. And what we want to do is double check what exactly our order is. For us, it is Rocephin, also known as Cefoxetin. So a great way to get there is there are alphabetical order buttons. So I'm going to go through A through E and then go press on C. And then now we can go page down and look for what we're looking for. So there it is, Cefoxetin. So we're going to click on this arrow, Cefoxetin. And our order says we have one gram, so we're going to do one gram dosing. We do not have a weight-based dosing, so if you had one, you can go ahead and press weight-based. But in our case, we do not. So we're going to go ahead and press non-weight-based dosing. So. This is super important. Make sure you are double checking your orders. We have double checked our orders and we have one gram of 50 milliliters. I always check my bag to make sure that this is exactly what we're going to be pro, uh, pumping to the patient. So I'm gonna go ahead and press one gram for 50 milliliters. And this program is program pump is great because it will always make you double check. It says, Cefoxetin, one gram in 50 milliliters was selected. Is this correct? we're going to press yes. Okay, so now we are at our final stage and I always check at every screen to make sure this is correct. So we have one gram of our drug with a dilute volume of 50 milliliters, so 50 milliliters, and our dose is one gram, and so it does this calculation for us, 0 0.02 grams per milliliter. So we're going to press next. And this will tell us our duration. It's going to be 30 minutes. Always make sure that your order makes sense and that this is the correct volume to be infused, the correct duration, and the correct dose. Once we are ready and we feel like this is correct and we understand that it is correct, we can go ahead and press start. And this is a great option opportunity to be like, verify second clamp is open. So we wanna make sure all of our clamps are open. So I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp all of our clamps from the secondary tubing, as well as our primary tubing at the bottom. Once we are done with that, we can press confirm and we should be ready to go. And over here, you'll see our rate is 100 milliliters an hour and it'll tell us Cefoxetin right here.